What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Josh, one of your Linode developer advocates. And today I wanted to show you guys how to install and use FFmpeg in Ubuntu on Linode. Now, if this is your first time hearing about FFmpeg, FFmpeg is a free and open source software project consisting of a bunch of libraries and programs for handling video, audio, and other multimedia files. It's available on the three most popular platforms, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. And the application is meant to run from the command line. And just so you know, FFmpeg has a whole bunch of features included with the application, such as converting an input file into another format, as well as encoding video with various compression code axes. So sit back, relax, and let's get started showing you guys how to install FFmpeg and some basic usage. Okay, cool. So I, right now I'm connected to my Ubuntu server on the nodes platform. And the first thing I wanna do is show you guys how to get it installed, get FFmpeg installed so you can actually use it. And it's very simple to install on Ubuntu, and I'll walk you guys through that now. But the first thing you want to do is update your server. Uh, and you can run these commands together, but it's basically sudo apps updates. And then also, I'm going to run these two together. So I'm going to run sudo apps upgrades together. And this is what that ampersand is for in the middle. It'll basically run this command. And then once it finishes this command, it'll run this command. And this is the actual upgrade command. So this will check to see if there are any updates for the packages on the server. And then this will actually upgrade it. And so let's go down and run this. I know this server is up to date, but I want to at least walk you guys through step by step how to get it installed properly so you can get the application installed and don't run into any issues. So let's press enter here. And it will ask you for your pseudo password. So boom, it'll check basically the mirrors or whatever to see if you have any updates on the system. And like I said, it'll update or upgrade this, the packages if there are any updates. And as you can see right now, it's basically saying there are no updates, but on here, uh, it's also showing you some packages that are still on here. They're stored on the system and basically they can be removed. They are older packages. So we can actually ignore that and go straight to the install of FFmpeg. And let's go down and install it. So all we have to do is type sudo apps install and then FFmpeg. And this is the package name. I just wanted to show you guys this or highlight this so you guys can actually see what is how it's spelled out. But FFmpeg. Uh, and so we can press enter. That is the package name. And it'll go through you know, get the dependencies. And then right here is just basically asking you, do you want to continue? Because it's going to uh, add these files to your system and take up additional space on it. So all we have to do is type Y and press enter. And that'll go through, download those packages first, and then go through the process of installing all these packages. And once this gets to the end, you'll see those that the installation was completed successfully. And I'll kind of skip ahead so you guys don't have to wait on this. Okay, and once you are dropped back down to the terminal, that lets you know that the installation was complete. If you didn't see any errors, then you should be good to go. No problems with actually installing. That's simply how to get FFmpeg installed. So one of the first things I wanted to show you guys is how to actually check the version of FFmpeg that's installed because when it comes to Linux distributions, most distributions or the maintainers of those distributions, they test out software to make sure it's going to work. And there may be updates to the application that haven't been tested yet on all distributions. Now the maintainers, they have, they take time to go through and test these applications to make sure they work on the latest version of whatever distribution you're using. And sometimes the package that they have available has been fully tested and working is considered like a stable version of the application. And so I'm only saying this so you will know you may not have the latest and greatest version of whatever application that you're installing. And that applies to FFmpeg as well. Uh, there may be a newer version out there 
that's not available within the Ubuntu repository because it hasn't been thoroughly tested in this latest version to verify that it'll work. So in order to just test the version, all we have to do is type FFmpeg and then dash version. And this will show us the actual version of FFmpeg that's installed. And let's scroll up a little bit. We'll see, you know, the full version right here. So 4.2.7. And like I said, it may not be the latest and greatest, but it is fully tested and you shouldn't run into any problems using this one here. It's the stable version that's been put out by the FFmpeg developers. And then also it covers the build uh, and then the configuration as well as like some codex information, you know, all that good stuff. Now, let's say you want to check out the encoders that are available to you uh, in case you need one for a specific task. Well, all you have to do is run FFmpeg dash uh, encoders and press enter and it will show you all the encoders available to you. Now I won't go through them all, but it's a whole bunch of uh, encoders that are there. And let's say you need to look at some of the decoders because you, in some cases you may need those decoders for whatever project that you're working on. But uh, decoders, all you have to do is type FFmpeg and then dash decoders. It'll show you all the decoders that are available to you as well. So, so that's awesome information you know you can gather from the application itself. Now, another one of the things I typically try to show people to look at uh, in case you need some help with the actual application is by looking at the man page. Now, essentially, man is short for manual. So it's essentially the manual for FFmpeg. And all you have to do is type man and then FFmpeg. This is, like I said, this is another application. Man is another application or utility that's built into Ubuntu. So Anytime an application is installed, if it has a man page that's included with it within the package when it's installed and it's added to the manual, the list of manuals that you have on the system. And so let's say you need to understand how to actually run the command where well, you can go into the man page and it'll give you a whole bunch of information about the actual utility or application that you installed on here. And as you can see, the name of it is FFmpeg. So FFmpeg video converter. And I won't go through all of this. I won't read all of this because I kind of talked about it in the beginning, but this is the synopsis. This is basically how you run the command. Uh, and then a description. And then it also goes through, you know, how it actually works. You know, their man page is very detailed and it breaks down how this complex application can work for you. Uh, and you may need this in order to figure out how to use it depending on the project that you're working on. And if you go through here, they also give you examples, which I'm going to show you some of the examples uh, now just to give you some basic overview of how to actually use FFmpeg. So let's quit it. Uh, I just wanted to briefly cover that so you guys would have a reference of where to go if you run into any issues. Now, let's go a little deeper in FFmpeg. And one of the first things I wanted to show you guys is how to either compress or convert video into a different format. That's typically what a lot of people use FFmpeg for. And so let me show you guys how to the basic way of actually doing this. And I have a video up here um, as a content creator. I have a bunch of videos where I've made mistakes. Most of the time I delete them, but sometimes I have a few still sticking around. Uh, and so I uploaded one to the server using SCP. I basically copied it up to the server securely. And so I wanted to show you guys that right fast. So it's in my home directory, but it's a MP4. As you can see, it just has the date. Uh, that's the name of the actual file. And it's in the MP3, MP4 format. And let's say we want to convert this to a WebM format. So let me show you guys how to do that. And it's very simple. All we have to do is type FFmpeg and then dash I. And just so you guys know, the I stands for input. And so essentially what we want to do is take this input file, um, which is in an MP4 format, and we want to put it in a web m format so all we have to do is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do it the easy way by uh, just typing out the file name boom 
back off the extension and what we want to put it in is web m and this is a basic command this is a basic conversion command this will compress and convert it to that format now you could put more options in it uh, i'm just showing you guys the base way of doing it and you guys can see it actually work uh, and it doesn't take too long because this video is kind of small uh, it'll go through uh, and run through the full process you'll see uh, a lot of output uh, and you can go through and read through this so you can get a better understanding of it. But what it's going to do is basically going to take that file and convert it over to the WebM file. And then we can look at it from there and just check it out. And I believe this video is about 30 seconds long or so. And it's in the 1080p format uh, at 60 frames per second. So it may take a little time, but I'll be back when it finishes. Okay, cool. So our command has finished running and it will give you some feedback at the end of it. Now, I know by just using a default, it will lower the quality uh, drastically. Uh, that's why it's important to understand the options that you have available to you using FFmpeg. And that's why I make that's what makes the command so powerful. But if you look here, I just wanted to show you guys some of this. This is what it exported out to. It basically did uh, 858 frames and frames per second is 1.4. So that basically took the quality way down on this video. Now, uh, one other thing I wanted to show you guys was the time. Now, it spits out the amount of time that it actually took. And it took about 14 minutes. And that's a very long time for a small short video and like i said this video is no more than 30 seconds and the original size of the video is about 24 megabytes and that's very long for a video that size and the reason i wanted to bring that up because this is where you can take advantage of the nose platform you can upgrade your servers to include more powerful hardware which will make the processing of these videos, these videos a whole lot easier. And let's say you don't have any of that software or hardware at your, you know, house or business, then by quickly spinning up a Linode instance with the hardware that you need just to process some video files, and then you can shut it down at that point, it's very beneficial. And that's why I recommend you set one of these things up in Linode in order to handle jobs like this. Now, I can't possibly go through all the options that you can do while converting videos. Otherwise, this will be an hour long video and I don't want to take up too much of your time. I just basically want to show you guys the basics. But you do have options to change bit rates as well as frame rates uh, when it comes to converting a video. And that way you can get a better quality compressed video in a different format. And one thing I also wanted to show you guys is the different types of formats that are supported. And you can check that by running FFmpeg and then space dash formats with an S and press enter. And it'll give you a list of all the different formats that are supported by FFmpeg. As you can see, I knew uh, WebM was available. That's why I went on and did that one. But you also have AVI, which I'm sure is up here at the top because it's in alphabetical order. And boom, as you can see, it audio video video uh, interleaved. So AVI is supported and a whole bunch of other supported formats. Now, let me go down and show you guys something else that's super cool uh, that a lot of people use with FFmpeg. And this is splitting the video from the audio. Let's say you want to make changes to your audio for the actual video file that you're working on for your project, where there's an option to separate the two. And let's go down in LS this directory so we can see the files that we're working with. And I want to work with that MP4 file again. And let's walk through the command and how you actually do it. So all we have to do is type FFmpeg and then dash I for our input. And then the video file, which is that uh, 2022, um, and then the MP4. And actually, I'm going to probably remove that WebM file because the quality is so bad. And 
before I do that, let me let me let me actually show you the size difference. That's one thing I should have shown you guys. So let's go LS and then dash LAH and press enter. And this will show you the sizes of those files in comparison. So 28 megabytes for the MP4. And as you can see, the WebM is 604K. So kilobytes. <laughs> That's crazy on the size difference. And like I said, it'll compress it as well as convert it to that format. Now let's go down and type in our uh, command again. Sorry about that, but ffmpeg and then dash i and then put our input. So it's that 20, 22 and then mp4, boom. And then we have to put in two options. So dash v and n, you could put them together and then we can specify our audio file. So let's go, I'm gonna name it the exact same thing. So, but at the end of it, I'm gonna put mp3 because that's what I want to do. I want the audio, you know, extracted from that video file to a audio file format, which is mp3. And basically what those two options will do is block the video streams, just so you guys understand how it actually works. It'll block the video streams from being process and it'll only process the audio file. So let's go down and press enter now and go through that process of extracting out the audio. And boom, it doesn't take long at all for audio because essentially all it's doing is extracting it out and putting it into a MP3 format. Now let's go down to LS this directory again so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And like I said, this thing is super small. Uh, so that's why the size of the audio is it's not that much audio. Um, but that's why it's super small. It didn't convert anything other than the audio to an MP3 fo format and it doesn't have any video in it. So it doesn't, that's why it doesn't take long to extract it from the video. It blocks all those video streams. So you don't have to worry about the size of it. All right, so it's one other thing or a quick thing I wanted to show you guys that I probably should have showed you in the beginning, but let's say you need to get some information about a file that you're working with and you want to understand how to how you want to convert it. Well, you need to gather some information to start with. And by running the dash I command, you can look at that command as information as well. So FFmpeg, and it gives you this information when you're converting it as well. Uh, but you can look at, instead of that being input, you can also look at it as information. So let's say you wanna check out the information of that original MP4 file that we had. So let's go down and uh, type that file name in, and this will give you that information. You don't have to do any conversion of that file at all. You can just run it without any other options past that point. And it'll give you all that same information we saw while it was doing a conversion, but Let's say you want to look at it beforehand before making your decisions. Uh, like, for instance, it gives you all the information about it. So duration, it's about 14 seconds, uh, the streams, uh, the video format. So H264, which is in a high, you know, set and then uh, 1920 by 1080p. So that's the size of it. And also the frame rate. So uh, it's frames per second. So 60 frames per second. You, you can gather a whole lot of information about the file just by looking at it at the input option. And then you can decide what options you want to run. And then like you can do it with any of your files. So, like for instance, that MP3 file that we just created, we could just run it on that. That'll give you all the MP3, you know, information. You can look at bit rates, you know, uh, the file format, you know, all that information. We know what it is by the MP3, you know, extension, but just that information is needed. The encoder, you know, in case you want to make changes to it. Now, lastly, let me go down and show you guys how to convert a video and I'll use a bunch of options. You know what I'm saying? And this will, you know, be a little bit more complex than what we've done so far. And I'll show you guys how to, well, I'll break everything down as we go through the command. So let's start off with FFmpeg and then dash I for our input. So we're going to start with that, that original uh, MP4 file. So let's type that in. So MP4. And what I want to do since that file is in 1920 
by 1080p or 1080 then let's say we want to scale it down to a different you know size where there's some options all you have to do is type dash vf and then we can specify the scale uh so that's uh equals uh let's get it down to 720. uh so i believe that format is uh or that scale is uh 1280 and then 720. So that'll take it down to 720 uh, as the scale. Now, there are some presets in there that allow you to uh, get like somewhat of the best quality. Uh, so let's say we want to keep the quality, you know, it, as high as possible where well, you can use one of these presets. And one of the preset I typically use is uh, the slow. So that'll get us a good preset or a good uh, quality video by putting by using that preset now let's also specify the frame rate and there's an option you can also put so dash c or f and it basically stands for constant frame rate rate and let's just go with something like 18 that's fine and then now let's go down and give us an output of the the file itself and let's use that same name but what i'm gonna do is add on to the end of it like right here I'm gonna put 720. They'll let me know that that's my 720 video. So it's in that format. So 720, and then let's put the, you know, the output format to MP4 as well. And let's go down and run this command. And it may take a little time, so I'll be back when it finishes, but let me at least show you guys what it's gonna do. And I actually see where I made the mistake. Uh, if you look at the beginning of the FFmpeg command, I missed type the i so i missed that let's go on and do it right fast so we can get this going and that's why what makes this application or utility so complex is a lot you know especially when you start typing out what you want to actually do uh you can miss things so it's important to double check your lines and all that stuff i mean especially uh working with linux in the command line you want to double check that you have all your options and everything set so let's go down and press enter and that'll start that process and I'll be back when it finishes. All right, cool. So we are 100% complete with converting that file. So let's go down and uh, check it out right fast. Let's just do a ls dash lah and press enter and we will see the new 720 file right there. And as you can see, the size has been greatly reduced. Uh, due to the size of the video or the scale of the video has been changed. So it went from 28 megabytes down to 4.7 megabytes. And then also let's go in and check out information about the file. So we could type FFmpeg and then dash I, and then we can type in that file name and then put the underscore 720. That's the name of it. Press enter. It'll give us some information about it. As you can see now, it is uh, 1280 by 720. You know, that's what we changed it to, as well as it still has that 60 frames per second. Uh, and that's why I wanted to keep the same formatting or at least the same quality of the video by using that preset, which will give us like the best uh, quality by lowering the scale of the video. So that's super awesome. You know, and FFmpeg is very pow powerful. And I know I only showed you guys a little bit of it because it's difficult for me to put a lot of all you can do within one video for FFmpeg. So this is almost like an introduction to FFmpeg. I'll probably do a port two of using FFmpeg and I'll show you guys how to do batch processing using FFmpeg, you know, within a script or uh, bash script, you know, using FFmpeg to convert, let's say multiple files or make changes to multiple files, or let's say we want to scale, you know, a bunch of files within a directory down from 1080p to 720p. We know they were recorded in 1080p, but let's say we want to scale all those files down to 720p. That's why I showed you guys a more complex, you know, command at the end so we can move into actually creating a bash script that we can run to convert multiple files all it does all we have to do is specify what files we're looking for 
and then the script will handle everything for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope it was helpful in you guys getting a better understanding of how to use FFmpeg. As I said earlier, FFmpeg is super powerful and it's an awesome tool that can help you while working with video and audio files on your system. And one of the great benefits, you can run these commands within Linode, which I think is super awesome. Now, as always, thank you so much for watching the video and please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, please check out the Linode community site, which will be linked down in the description of the video. See you guys in the next video. Peace.